do not deceive you. I am wearing a different colored shirt today than usual, but that's okay. That's okay. You don't need to cry or get upset or or, or call anyone for help because 3.0 is here. Now, sadly, I am an iOS user and there seems to be a bug on the iOS version, which means I cannot buy the premium version. I just click on it and it just tells me to wait. And, you know, so earlier I clicked it and I, I was like, okay, I'll wait. And I did that for a while, but nothing happened. And the same goes with the little kitty one. And so all of you Android people, man, like you Android people are so lucky. You're so lucky, yeah, Android people. You can you get to, to, to buy this thing, and I can't buy this thing, and so I haven't got it. And so so all I'll be able to do today is the demos. Um, but Lee and Susan will be on. And uh, oh, and, and and Nicholas Briggs, apparently. Apparently Katie Manning is being has been transformed, regenerated into Nicholas Briggs. Uh, I'm not really sure how that works, but I guess that means we can ask him about both, uh, which is which is awesome. And it also, which is a shame, really, because it kind of killed the um, Doctor Who Legacy famous moment of the week. The Doctor Who famous moment of the of the week was going to be when Nicholas Briggs came on, and then Nicholas Briggs has come on. So I can't really show that as like the famous moment because, um, you know, he's actually key. Well, he's kind of ruined that, really. Um, in fact, I might actually have a go about that. Um, spawning my thing. It was going to be my thing. Um, but it's cool. So in case you guys have not noticed it, you know, you needed, uh, this is probably a manual update. I had to do it properly myself. You had to go into the, the, you know, the app store and, and update it. But you can see now lots of things. Look, kids area is now here, complete with kids. The premium stuff is now here, complete with premium and a few little other changes. So for example, um, team members, Perks and TARDIS are now all kind of in the same place together, looking very nice with new little artwork and, and, and things like that. And then the new logos around. And, 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 and look, look, they still haven't fixed the word setting. They still haven't. I knew they wouldn't. I knew it's just something they say every week. They're like, yeah, sure. Of course we will add it. We'll add it to this list. And you know what? When they say they add it to the list, what they're actually doing is, is, I don't know, smoking another dollar or, I don't know, signing another megastar of Doctor Who. They're not writing it on the list. They're not writing it on the list because it still says setting. It still says setting. Now, on the plus side, this is relevant and pointless, but I've done it anyway. You can now do Lee faces. You knew about Lee faces already. Lee faces in the on-screen chat are cool. But you could also now do Tom Baker laughing faces. Thank you very much, Confused, for demonstrating the Tom Baker laughing face. You can also do, Snow's just demonstrated there, Captain Jack winking face in case you needed to flirt with someone. Who better to flirt with other than Captain Jack? You can also do Mickey scared face. Yes, Mickey scared face, very, very important. You can also do... You can also do monster thumbs up with a gas mask, which is important, which is important. Um, so I hope um, I hope you guys, you know, feel, uh, you know, use that appropriately. Did we do Donna? We might have done Donna. I might have done Donna. Did I do Donna? I thought I did Donna. I thought I put a Donner in. Did I put a Donner in or did I just think about putting a Donner in? I definitely started putting Donner in. Who knows? There may have been some Donner at some point. Anyway, let's get let's get cracker lacking. Oh wait, before we get cracker lacking, I need to set you guys your challenge of the week. Yes. Green. Deal with it. Right, so. Oh hang on, I need the music. Hang on, we're doing Doctor Who Challenge of the Week. Then we need the Doctor Who Challenge of the Week music to make it sound scary. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, welcome. This week's Doctor Who Challenge, Legacy Challenge of the Week, kind of involves Doctor Who Legacy. It is a different kind of a challenge. Before I do, let me just thank you. So many of you went to last week's challenge. It was very exciting to see so many cool little entries, and I'm glad you're enjoying the challenge. This week I want to set something a little bit different, but I want to make sure that I'm getting all of your challenge entrance. Um, if you are entering this challenge, you need to use the hashtag Doctor Who Legacy Challenge, DWL Challenge, because when I pick the prize, because one person from this at random is going to win one crystal, you need to do hashtag DWL Challenge. And I'm going to search for them, and I'll pick one person at random, and that one person at random will, will, will win a crystal. It's just for fun. Or is it... It might, 
involve human survival in the future? We cannot be sure. We haven't done the appropriate legwork or discussions yet. So, here is the challenge. Oh, some of you might be thinking, well, how do I how do I get it if I don't have a Twitter account? That's a good question. What you do is you go to Twitter and you sign up. Okay, do it, if anyone needs me to run that through again, uh, run through that again, then you know, just let me know and, I'll, and I, can, I can explain it again in roughly the same amount of detail that I did before. But that's, that, that's, that's your kind of best um, solution to that non-Twitter pro- problem. Right, here we go. This is the challenge. You're going to like this. You might not like it, but if you do like it, great. There it is. This is the challenge, my friends. Susan, earlier on Facebook, put this picture of a Jadun onto Facebook. You might remember this from a few weeks ago. This is the black and white version from um, the kids area. Your mission, if you would like to be in the running of winning a Doctor Who legacy. Time crystal, very, very simple. Color in the Jadun. That's it. Color in the Jadun. If you obviously you can download it, you can you can use an art program, you can you can do it on a computer, you can if you, if you want to cheat, you can just go into paint and just be kind of like fill, 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 fill. Done. If you want, you can paint it again in art colours and be like, yes, look at this. You can like sketch it out, you can use like weird filters. I don't mind, go crazy. In fact, don't go really crazy because not only could you win a crystal let uh, uh, at random, but you know some of my favourites I'll show next week as well. How's that? Um, in, in the stream next week, I'll show some of my favourites. But obviously, my favourites need to be the ones that stand out, which could stand out because they're crazy. They could stand out because they're funny. They could stand out because they're just really, really good. Um, yes, bow ties, absolutely. You can you can colour on a laptop. You can colour colour in any way you like, um, uh, as as long as it's approximately the same picture of a jadoon. Now, if any of you would like to, I'm sure how to get this picture. It's there. Um, I have. Oh, the music just stopped. Um, tiny Earl. I made a tiny Earl for it. Yeah, I made a tiny Earl for it so you guys can get to it really, really quickly. And you should be able to kind of grab it there. Okay, so that's your task. Once you've done it, tweet it to me using the hashtag DWL Challenge. And then I'll search for them later. And my favorites I'll show in next week's stream. And one person will win a random time crystal. Does this make sense? Obviously, next week we will go back to like a more in-game Doctor Who Legacy challenge. But a few of you requested this, and I think it's a really, really cool idea, and it's something different. I want to make it exciting, and I know some of you will be sketching and coloring it, even as I say this. Some of you will be already, you know, pens out, pads out, sketching, doodling, noodling. I mean, some of you, let's face it, will just kind of go into paint and just kind of just fill that grey, fill that black, fill that red, and then be like, <laughs> but you know, that's quite cool. Oh, Susan's going to have Lanyon colour as well. Cool, well, maybe Lanyon will win a time crystal of his very own. This is your challenge. Do not let me down. Well, thank you, Green Scary Addy, for setting that challenge. We love everything you do because we're scared that you'll come over here and hurt us if we don't. Now, another little bit of news for you. Oh, you might have seen on Twitter... Um, that tiny rubber game, Susan and Lee, will be... Oh, yeah, sorry, how much time... Dare to Smile just said, how much time do we have? You have until Sunday. I draw, I'll draw. i draw the crystal on Sunday. So you've got until Sunday to tweet that to me. If you tweet me on Monday, then you won't. Um, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Um, you might have seen on Twitter that Tiny Rebel Games are involved in... Um, a game called Flat Out, which is coming to mobile. And there's an old Flat Out. There's Flat Out 1, Flat Out 2, Flat Out Ultimate Edition. So after the Doctor Who Legacy stream today, I'm going to take my usual little 10, 15 minute break to go and find myself on a journey of discovery. But then I'll come back on and I'll play some of that Flat Out game. So if you're interested in seeing some of the other things that Time Rebel Games will be doing in the future, you can see um, a little bit of Flat Out um, tonight. So, you know, don't you dare go anywhere. Come back and join me and we can we can race things and, 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 um, and cool little things like that. So let's get started. Um, Susan, I believe you're... Oh, console and... Oh, sorry, console and PC. Oh, sorry, I got I got that wrong. I'm sorry, I thought it was an app. Um, let me know when you want to... Just Skype me when you want to come on, Susan. You're welcome on whenever you want. Um, so let's get started on on some of this, like, stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. I've been told... Susan said when 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 Nicholas is on, I am I need to skip past all the stuff. So I want, I want to read the kind of plot lines now before 
he comes on mainly because he'll do the voices better than me. So um, I need to do it myself. Here we go. So 3.0. Here we go. <clears throat> As time spins around them, the various incarnations of the master sit around their TARDIS. So, that was your big plan, was it? Crush them with a Cyber King? You truly are insane. Well, we didn't end up with the flattened doctor that I hoped for. I wouldn't call it a complete failure. During the chase, we managed to scan his TARDIS for quite a while after River shut down some of the safeguards. And I also used the time to hunt down an old friend. I'm such a multitasker. Ah, oh, please, Missy, do enlighten us with your genius. Well, we've started to reverse engineer the device the Doctor is going to use against our Toclophane enemy. He sits up, suddenly caring. Who is this we? So we now have a way to stop the Doctor. Movement in the shadows. Missy breaks into a sly smile. Wait, no, that wasn't dialogue, that was script. A movement in the shadows, and Missy breaks into a sly smile. <gasps> it's internationally renowned superstar! Eric Roberts! And we're adding Susan to our call. Which is very cool, hopefully. Hello! Hey yo! I hope the sound's okay, because Lee and I are going to sit next to each other, so you're just going to have to, you know, cope with the fact that I don't have my awesome sound headphones on. Oh, I'm just going to have to deal with it, am I? It's my problem. That was the sound of Lee pouring himself a whiskey. A really large one. <laughs> I thought we weren't allowed help. to say the word whiskey on stream anymore. Oh, yeah. Water. Big glass of water. Amber, dirty cup of water. Is it's this been a bad, bad, long, rough... I mean, like, is it? am. Yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere, I'm sure. It's after really, 12. Yeah, it's, it's okay somewhere. It's okay. all time you want. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, all... eight, it's 8 p.m. here. No, that's great. Right. In, in fact, Susan, I'm glad you're here, because I've just loaded up um, the, the, the Eric Master, and obviously he speaks with an American accent, and, I mean, I'm sure you don't want to hear me do an American accent, so I, I thought maybe you could do it for us. So I have to do a male American accent. Well, I would Lee, but I figured you could do the more masculine one. No, but we now have to find a way to fight back. We wasted too many of our lives because of that man. Payback is long overdue. Oh, hang on, that's a lizard voice. Uh, Lee, could you do a female lizard for us? No. Right, okay, fine, I'll do it. Doctor, I'm freezing. Does the TARDIS have a thermostat? Anyway, sorry, <laughs> rather than plot lines, how has the launch of 3.0 gone, gone? It's really, really exciting. It's very, very cool. I was um, pumped last night to see all the countdowns going on and like two hours to go, one hour to go, and be like, yay, and stuff. It's a roller coaster, isn't it? Yeah, it always is. We were so, we, well, we are still nervous, but the day before is always horrible because, you know, all this stuff we've been working on, all these ideas, we don't know if people like them or hate them or what, and it's, it's really nerve wracking for you put new stuff out. It's horrible. Horrible. I didn't get much sleep last night. I was up till one o'clock in the morning. I was up at probably six. I was dreaming about crashing. You know, there's that. Oh dear. It sounds awfully stressful. I, I, I mean, is there a bit of you that's no, happy that it's out? Yes. Yeah. It is people, everyone well, can actually bugs. access it loves it. Yes. There's, there's, there's a few bugs. Um, but but issues in iOS, the yeah. feedback's been great. People seem to like it. There's lots of stuff to do in there. Um, yeah, so fingers crossed. Well, yeah, um, as 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 you well know, Addy, we we seem to have this 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 medium issue on iOS where people uh, are having a hard time unlocking these new premium areas, and uh, we know we 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 appreciate and share your frustration. And um, Apple is trying to help us to figure out why this is happening. Everything seems by the book, and it's only happening on iOS, and we don't know why. And it's not even happening to anyone, everyone, because people have purchased it. So. We don't know. Um, I wish I had answers, but um, Android, everything seems to be running smoothly. Amazon, everything seems to be running smoothly. Facebook, everything is running smoothly. Apple is running smoothly. If you're lucky, if you're one of those people who come up here, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> we're gonna fix it. It happens, you know. It's it's it's. It, I mean, the fact is, because you've got the demo on there, right? you everyone can get a little bit of a preview. And I can check you know. it out. I get excited about it. Yeah, and uh, and we're gonna today. We're gonna we're gonna give away one of the kids' costumes and one of the we're gonna give away the the tenth Doctor's kid costume and the second Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, which are in the free area, but there you have to grind for it because we can't unlock the premium area if you're one of those people. So we're gonna give you that today. Oh, that's very very kind of you. Thank you very much. Well, if you message me the codes, I will put them on the screen whenever you yes. or the or the code I should say. I, I will I will put that 
Um, Oh, so Lee, what are you? I wish, most... I, had, I, wish I had a camera on because because our dog is being really crazy, and now Lee is crawling around the floor chasing her around. It's really cute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond to that. I haven't had that kind of conversation before. Um, I mean, yeah, you do need to turn the camera on because that would. I mean, I mean that would be. I mean that would go under a Doctor Who Legacy highlight stream highlight forever. You know, Lee chases dog. Exactly. What are you uh, most proud of in, in 3.0, Susan? The fact that we pulled it off. The fact that we, we uh, had this crazy idea that, I should say Lee had this crazy idea about launching this update and we had a plan and then we pitched seed on it and we're like, they're going to they're gonna kill us for some things suggesting this. And they, they, they agreed with our plan and um, and BBC, you know, agreed and, and did what they needed to do. And the fact that we did all that and managed to put it out a month before the new season like we planned is, is crazy. Uh, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, I'm very proud of the writing that 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 Lee's done in that. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's very cool. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of really cool new technology in there. We uh, yeah, I'm proud of of, of, of Quenda and all the oh, cool Quenda, scripting the new stuff scripting stuff is amazing. But you know, yeah. we can uh, we can now let you play with characters that you don't own as you're doing now because you don't technically own these characters you're in a team with. They're not in your TARDIS, but you can use them. So I was going to ask use, about that. So, that, so are these? So, obviously, there's a river and a first doctor here, and a Captain Jack. So, is this like a, a sp- uh, like a special blue Captain Jack or a special blue river? Or, yes. or the- yes, we created. We could kind of put together this great team. It works really well together. And uh, so, uh, after the first few levels of this, all that team will drop, and you can start using them and mixing and matching them. But for the first few levels, we thought just to keep the story sort of coherent at the beginning, you should be forced to use that team, the team who's going out having this adventure. And then later you can sort of swap things in as they start dropping. Um, cool. But for the first few levels, you don't have these guys in your TARDIS, but you can still play them, which we've never done before. So now we can have weekly levels which force you to use a team that you don't necessarily own, or you can, we can have a try before you buy. So if you want to try out a character uh, that you don't own, if you want to try them in the game, we can do that there. So it's think, really neat. I think that's a really cool idea. A, I mean, like I mean you, you actually worked really, really hard on, your, on the plot lines, and obviously we enjoy kind of reading them through. And then having... You know, I wouldn't necessarily say for. Uh, it would be it would be nice to have like a couple of characters that you had to you had to use. I mean, like in some of the expert levels, you know, the you know from from from, from level to from, from in occasional levels to have a couple of characters you have to use that kind of go with the plot line. I think that's a really nice idea. Well, yeah. What's nice is there's certain stories where you might not want, and we wouldn't get permission to use a character as an ally because you know they're not an ally to the Doctor. But during that story, maybe they work together for five minutes. You know, there's always those sort of characters that pop in now to, to uh, I guess, too bad to be allies in our game. But if we had a, a way to have them in a level, for one level, they don't drop, you can't use them everywhere. Um, we start can start putting those characters in a special storyline characters. You know, these special sort of you know, levels are special in another way. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. And, and, and a call, as always, to kind of, you know, to kind of see your favorite characters from the show kind of cropping up, even if it is only for a level or two, to kind of go, ooh. Um, so, so what is this? Uh, so on this right hand side? That's the the first Doctor's sonic ring, isn't it? That's our first sonic device. Is that right? Signet? No, no. Did you not, not? It's not a sonic device. I think the Doctor says specifically, and I, you probably read it in his voice that it's not a sonic device. Sorry, I, I skipped past the plot line. The plot line because you came on. Did you, <laughs> do you, did you want me to go back and, and, and read the plot line? I can. No. Just... So oh. the Masters have stolen all the sonic devices, but the first Doctor had a signet ring that isn't. A sonic device. It has all, a lot of the same uses as a sonic device, but it's sort of the thing he had before he started having sonic screwdrivers. So when they all vanish, this, this his ring doesn't vanish. So he's in a very unique position where he can now put a team together and go off and have this adventure. And we thought it would be neat. The first character you get that is, you know, a, a, like a tool, not a, you know, a real character, which should be that signet ring for the first doctor. So I'm sorry. I, I I did want to read the plot. I just thought that you know you, you tend to get a bit antsy when I read out your plot lines and, and cry a little bit. So I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> how, how how's the dog situation? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. I think I scared her off. It's okay. <laughs> Have you ever been on? Has my cat ever attacked me while we've been doing live live stuff on Doctor Legacy? Because I've had to like you know. Do I've seen your cat move. She sort of sits there, and looks at you, keep an eye on you, controlling you, and then sometimes she's not. Not actually moving around. 
Oh, that was a lovely animation there on the time cracks as they walked in. That was really, really nice. It is. They, are, they, they did a great job on these little touches. So how much kind of like, because obviously the, the art style of Doctor Who Legacy is deliberately like kind of like 2D drawn, but you've got, you know, you're starting to get in, you know, the occasional little more kind of special effect, like the cracks there, you know, the, um, the you know, the eye little animations you get when you activate the abilities and, and, and things like that. And um, it, I really like the touches. And I, and I think I just played the beginning of one of the kids levels earlier. And just, I think it was Peter Capaldi. The doctor, he just jumped up and down when he was like saying, "Let's have an adventure," and he kind of bobbed up and down. I thought it was really, really nice. Glenn <laughs> has <Twen, laughs> been dicking around in the scripting system, doing all sorts of fun little things like doctors falling and bouncing around. I can't stop giggling when I play the kids' letters and they jump up and down. So cute! It is, and it 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 it, it might only be a kind of like little touches here and there, but it, you know, it helps to bring the kind of static artwork to life. I think following us. Are we ready for for Nick? Sorry, are we ready for Nick? Ray? Sure. Are you, are you oh. adding him? Well, I just I just saw a pop up on my screen. I haven't seen anything, so I suggest you add him because I haven't heard. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, keep talking. Right. Okay. I am. I am going. I'm taking on my uh, taking on the Cybermen and now the Daleks. You're really kind of throwing all the enemies at me here. <laughs> can, I, can I add him to video? I'm getting added to your call, but what do you need to do? That? It's the Pandorica Alliance. There's a lot of baddies in our lives. That, 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 that's that's an official people. thing, the Pandorica Alliance? It, it is. It absolutely is. Oh. It's the, all the races have got together to create the Pandorica and trap the Doctor there. Addy. Well, yes. How, how do I... Can you add Nick uh, on video? Because if I do it, I'm only getting the option to add him. I don't know if you do it your call. I think I'll just add him to the group call, and then we'll just see what happens. Okay, you do that. I think where it'll go wrong is if some of us are on video and some of us aren't, it'll it'll might be a bit random. But we'll 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 deal with that when we when when it comes around. Oh, got a nice little five times combo there. Oh no, four times combo. Ah, boo! Hello, Nicholas. Hello. Greetings. Welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Now, are you aware that the original guest for this show was supposed to be Katie Manning, and therefore you need to fulfil her role as well as your own? <laughs> How's that? that? That was pretty good. That's pretty good. Could you, if you could get attacked by some sort of giant worm during the broadcast, that would that would probably help. This is Katie with her scripts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, a very what last minute addition there? today. What Thank you so much for, for agreeing to come page. on. It's the page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to, uh, to to come on again. How 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 are you, and what are you currently involved with? Well, I can't tell you. Okay, well, that's a good chat. Thanks for coming. <laughs> no, I, I, I can certainly tell you that I'm well. Um, I just, um, I've just been in Chicago last weekend. Oh yes, I'm, I'm flying there today, Nicholas. Oh well, it's, it was. I don't know what the weather's like now, but it was very hot when I was there. I was there with um, my co-executive producer and uh, owner of Big Finish, Jason Hay Gallery. Wow, oh, I'm just about three hours my flight. Mm-hmm. Oh. And the last time we spoke to you, Nicholas, we were just before the um, the Humble Bundle Big Finish release, which was obviously yeah. a few months ago now. So what, what's happened with Big Finish and Doctor Who Adventures um, since then? Oh. <laughs> Lots. Lots. Oh, well, 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 give us the night. Fill us in. We want to know. Well, you know, we're, um, the thing, I'm working on something at the moment, which, you know, I alluded to that I can't talk about, but it's very, very exciting um, that we're hopefully we're recording at the end of September. I'm just being such a huge tease. I honestly can't tell you what it is, <laughs> but I'm writing some scripts. Uh, I've just, by the by, just finished writing our um, first box set of The Prisoner, uh, just jumping uh, shows for a moment there. Um, you know, the prisoner from 1967 that starred Patrick oh, McGowan. I, I believe I was a fetus, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was alive, uh, but I didn't watch it until about 10 years later when they showed it in 1977. Um, anyway, so I've just finished work on that. But of course, you know, we've announced a whole load of stuff. Hello? Hello, I'm here. I'm, I think that was Susan. Oh, I, what that was. I heard somebody asking me a question. But it was just in my head. No, no, uh, there was definitely something, but if it, might, it sounded like a kind of distress call from somewhere. But we'll, we'll, if we can tune in later, we'll deal with it. Um, it's probably. It sounded to me a bit like if you're uh, familiar with Revenge of the Cybermen. It sounded a bit to me like that Vogon who, who Vogan who says, "Can 
anyone hear me? But anyway, that's just a joke for Revenge of the Cybermen fans out there. I know there are many of you. I'm sure there are um, many, but you know, we've never had a Vogon on the show before, so I'm, I'm actually okay with it. Okay. Um, so, yes, uh, so of course we're doing uh, Adventures of River Song, and she's also uh, popping up in our Eighth Doctor series, The Doom Coalition, with Paul McGann. Um, battling against a, a, a multifaceted, very strange enemy. Is, is Alex Kingston voicing herself in that? In of course, Thanks. yes. What would be the point otherwise? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> she is, yeah. And she's had a, a fantastic time and is really keen to do more, which is brilliant. And, of course, we've been doing, we've been doing Torchwood. Uh, Scott Hancock's been uh, directing that, James Goss producing it and writing it. Brilliant scripts. All sounding fantastic. I'm very excited about Torchwood, and so were the Torchwood fans. It bro- <laughs> when we announced the news, it broke our sight. We weren't quite prepared for the number of visitors. <laughs> I think Torchwood is one of those ones that that because it because it obviously had a uh, Doctor Who's still going, whereas Torchwood has ended. But the fans are pretty. The, the people that like Torchwood really, really like Torchwood, and so they're quite a rabid little fan base. Um, so yeah. Any kind of Torchwood news or any kind of new Torchwood production is going to get people very, very, very excited. So I'm sure you've, I'm yes. sure you've tapped into a, a very yeah. excited little well there. Well, well, that's what we're hoping, and you know, and the people who are doing Torchwood for us really love it and know it well. And uh, Russell T Davis, you know, obviously created Torchwood, yeah. has been fantastically supportive and excited for us that we're doing it was very keen for us to do it right from the start when we first mentioned it to the bbc so and that's been really helpful to us i mean russell's always been lovely to us as indeed as stephen moffat you know we're very fortunate and that we you know know love and trust these people you know so and they hopefully trust us and love us back <laughs> so, where, where are you, know, you setting your story in terms of the the torchwood timeline because obviously it goes through quite a few substantial personnel changes and, and things along the way don't ask me that. <laughs> uh, are you not going to tell me that? Okay. <laughs> well, we've, we've recorded one with Yanto, so, you know, <gasps> do a clue. Oh, he's not so. dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we've said it before he died. Maybe that, you know, so there's some... Um... There's a lot of happiness about Yanto coming back. That's awesome. Oh, right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I presume they'll leave the shrine up in Cardiff. Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think the, the, the I, I did have trouble when, when I was visiting Cardiff. I mean, I visit Cardiff quite a lot, but when I visited Cardiff when I was doing the Doctor Who live uh, arena tour quite a few years ago, now I showed that shrine to my wife, who knows nothing of these things, and I said, "Do you see that?" She said, "Oh yeah, that's really good." I said, "That's for a fictional person." She went, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> So it's quite bizarre for people on the outside, but of course, you know, when you're on the inside of it and it means so much to you, you know, like I, you know, like the new trailer for the new series of Doctor Who, you know, I get a feeling in my gut and kind of go, oh, it's Doctor Who coming back. And, you know, it must be the same for Torchwood fans as well. I mean, you know, I I, I didn't watch all of Torchwood, but, you know, I was certainly interested in it and, and, and I ended up being in it, which was lovely. <laughs> well, it, it was, it was it was one of those shows that I, I feel was a little bit hit and miss, but when it hit, it was outstanding. I mean, Children of Earth was one of the best sci-fi adventures, I think, ever. Children of Earth was just so fantastic. And then, then was Miracle, Miracle Day was just so sad. I was like, no, more Children of Earth, please. <laughs> well, I just, um, you know, um, my, the, one of the big experiences I take away from um, Children of Earth was uh, meeting Peter Capaldi. Yes. And discovering that he was such a huge Doctor Who fan that when I went to introduce myself to him, he stopped me and said, you've no need because I know exactly who you are. And he was blessed because he's a very generous man. He was he was massively excited to meet the voice of the Daleks. So that was me massively excited to meet, you know, one of the best actors in Britain uh, and stand next to him and breathe the same air. And he was going, oh, my God, what's it like to be the voice of the Daleks? <laughs> you know, and we spent the rest of the shoots just um, giggling about Doctor Who and, you know, talking about Doctor Who in the way Doctor Who fans do, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was lovely. And we actually drove, we were driven to the set every day in the same car. So we had a lot of uh, chance to just chatter on about stuff. So it's always nice when I go and do Doctor Who now to, you know, go and tap on his uh, trailer door and we, we, you know, have a bit of a set the world to rights conversation, you know, which is lovely. He's a lovely man. He, 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 I ever hear about it. Uh, Peter Capaldi just makes me love that man more. He's just amazing, isn't he? He just lives and breathes that role in a way I don't think anyone has in a long, long time. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love Matt Smith and I love David Tennant and so forth, but 
it's like the first doctor again, you know, when like the stories of how he used to hang out with school children and stuff, you know, he's showing up with a card effects edition, like serving tea to people and, you know, popping up exhibits and hospitals. Just but I, think, yeah. I think all the doctors have their own personal style and do it, you know, as, as people and actors and they do it in different ways. And I think that, yes, I think, you know, Peter really takes it seriously, you know, the role of being the doctor and, and the sort of public responsibility of it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. I, I think it's awesome. Um, awesome. Right, we're going to head for a little... Oh, dear, I'm being bombed. Oh, my God, it's my first oh. experience of being bombed. I didn't even realise. I'm not being attacked by a Um Right, we're going to take a quick 60-second break. When we come back, we'll be talking more to Nicholas. We shall be giving away a code for all of you guys to get a cool little character, and we'll be having some more fun on this um, brand-new Doctor Who Legacy update as well. So we will see you, boys and girls, in 60 seconds. Don't you dare go anywhere unless you really need to. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, going by live. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We are here with Susan Nicholas Briggs and um, a Jadoon on, on the screen. I am going to get the... Uh, in fact, oh, Nicholas is kind of there. He's kind of on the screen right now. In fact, there, there, he, there, there, there he is. Um, yeah. it, it will skip between Susan and um, Nicholas as, as they keep talking, but I'll, I'll get Nicholas up on the screen permanently in just a second, uh, which would be great. Um, so, um, Nicholas, thank you again for coming on the show. And um, what else have you been working? What other projects have you been working on? Obviously, you mentioned Torchwood, and you mentioned um, the River Song, uh, the River Song Adventures. What? Any other characters you've got involved? Yes. Well, we've uh, got a new series of Unit coming out with Kate uh, Lethbridge Stewart and Osgood uh, from the new series in, and uh, we've recorded that already. And I think a second series, second box set of that is being recorded. Uh, and we also have, um, the, uh, adventures of Strax, the Sontaran <laughs> teaming up with Jago and Lightfoot. Jago That's and Lightfoot. Awesome. Yeah. Diego and Lightfoot. Lightfoot. Who's, is that the, 
the one from the Christmas episode? No. No, Jago and Lightfoot were from the uh, the story, The Talents of Wing Chiang with uh, oh. Tom Baker. Awesome. And we are on about, I don't know, the eighth or something series with them. They've been a real popular range for us. You know, they were created by Robert Holmes, that great old Doctor Who writer. Yeah. And there's always something about Robert Holmes' creations always very popular with our listeners. You know, when we've done stories featuring the Wirren from the Ark in Space, they're always sort of head and shoulders in terms of sales above anything around them. It's the Robert Holmes effect, you know. And so uh, so it's great. You know, the, the Sontarans are a Robert Holmes creation as well. So they sort of come together with Jago and Lightfoot, who are investigators of, of infernal and strange things that go on in the Victorian era, in Victorian London. And we just thought, what a match. And, you know, it's quite... It's quite an amusing thing that Strax thinks that Jago and Lightfoot, these two sort of respectable old gentlemen in Victorian times, are married to each other. <laughs> you know, so some comedy ensues, but also some, you know, terribly frightening adventures. We're also doing a series where we're teaming up uh, what one might have once called classic doctors, because they're all just doctors now, um, with, with new series monsters. So, Ooh, you know. So like so versus angels, like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the, the Angels and the uh, um, the Jadoon and new series Sontarans. And I'm missing another one, and I can't remember what it is now. It's that terrible. But anyway, yeah, so I'll be in the Jadoon one. Do you find, as, a, as, awesome. the, as the script writer for lots of these adventures, that the, mm-hmm. the character like Strax is is harder to write for? Because obviously, he, obviously he's very much like, you know, war, destroy, you know, sir, I, sir, I will throw in a hand grenade. Because obviously, because he's quite, he's quite one-dimensional. He's awesome, but he's quite one-dimensional. So as, as well, a writer, how do you kind of approach him? Well, I've not written any of the Strax stuff, but I would imagine for the writers, there's quite a challenge there because, of course, Strax embodies uh, uh, Stephen Moffat's wit and Stephen uh, is, you know, a vastly experienced writer and he's particularly good at comedy and i i would imagine it's quite difficult to match the unpredictability and the rhythms of the way steve writes the strax character i mean this is just my opinion no one's ever said it but i think or maybe they have and i just haven't been taking any notice i think that one of the reasons that strax has risen to the fore on the tv series is that steve just finds him irresistible as a character (laughs) i mean you know uh, I'm never a great fan of slapstick, but I have to say that moment in the you know the first episode with the new Doctor when Strax uh, threw the paper up to Clara and it just knocked her out. <laughs> I still laugh about it, thinking about it. It's just a hilarious moment, and I'm so pleased they put something like that in. You know, just a, a piece of nonsense, and I think that Strax is a brilliant piece of nonsense, but also he's fascinating because he's from a warrior race. And yet there he is sort of serving people and he's somehow being forced to be nice. But, you know, virtually every other sentence, some of his Sontar and warlike instincts just burst out. Yes, he, he, he can't help himself. Um, yeah, yeah. I think he can be a character that you know, really, you know, because he is kind of one dimensional. The nice thing about one dimensional characters is that you can have fun exploring their hidden depths, can't you? You know, expanding on yeah. them in, and finding things for them to do. I mean, have you got any other you know, going into the realms of fantasy, are there any other characters from Doctor Who that you maybe haven't been able to get onto a big finish adventure or other characters that you kind of think, oh, I'd love to write a story about, you know, X or Y or Z, you know, the characters that, you know, have made you, you know, salivate as a writer that you want to do something with? Yeah, you know, um, I'm not the kind of person who sits around longing to do stuff that I'm not doing. I think because I've been lucky enough with all the big finish stuff to be doing all the stuff I want to do. <laughs> Uh, you know, so, I mean, I love writing for Daleks. I'm sort of writing some stuff for Daleks at the moment. Uh, oh, I've given something away. And, um, you know, I, I'm pretty happy. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy doing what I do, you know, and any other opportunities that come up in this sphere are always welcomed by me. And I hope that I'm realistic about what what I'm good at and what I think other people are good at. That's been one of my favourite uh, personal, not to get too serious, remember, personal revelations in Big Finish is working out that it's almost as much fun to facilitate other people to do the things they love as it is to do the things you love. It's not quite as much fun, but it's really nearly as much fun. It's very satisfying to get the right people to do the right thing. You know, and going back to Torchwood, that's why it was so good to get James Goss uh, on board to produce the Torchwood stuff because he, you know, loves Torchwood. It means so much to him and he knows all about it. And, And same with Scott Hancock, you know, getting them to work on it. It's just brilliant 
you know, to just see them fly with the thing they love. You know, it's great stuff. Well, in both of the conversations I've had with you, this one and the one before, one of the things I admire most about you, and, and I'm very jealous of, I have to say, is just how varied your your job is. You know, you're you're an actor, you're a voice, you're you're you've done, you do sound effects, you're a project manager, you're a script writer. I mean, you you are living the 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 you know you're living the dream, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's quite stressful, and I would love to be able to spend a little bit more time with my family, <laughs> but that door behind me gets shut quite a lot. And and I have to just do what I do. Or if I'm not here at home, you know, I'm in the office in London. I'm going. I'm going off to a big meeting tomorrow where I have to, you know, catch a train at uh, what's it? It's, uh, about quarter to seven in the morning tomorrow. You know, and just head off for a, for, a, for a day trip. Well, I think I have to get in order to get it because I live in the middle of the country, so I have to get up about five o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm going for a big meeting in Maidenhead, which is the sort of main office of Big Finish for a big sort of get together with all the departments there. Um, but yeah, you're right. I do lots of other things. I've just been directing my stage adaptation of uh, Jekyll and Hyde yes. up at the Theatre Royal Nottingham, which which I wrote and did the yes. music for. Uh, it's not a musical, but there's music, you know dramatic music in it and oh, so that's, that's the uh, i was hyde in uh, i was a teenage jekyll and hyde no way no. Yeah. To fame, but it, it, it's I'm, I'm sticking with it. i'm impressed thank you I, I have to interject and point out that john davies come to join us in chat to hear you talk as well nick yay <laughs> so we have we have the the voice and the body of the jadoon in the channel <laughs> It's just Where awesome, he? right? He's in, he's in chat. I don't know. I don't see him in my he's Skype in the chat rather than the. Um, oh, if you he? still have him on Skype, we could add him in, Addy. Uh, yep. He's getting oh, wires. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> what does this work? What does this bit do? Oh. <laughs> right, Susan, we tried put, to get. Can you put your code up on the screen for Susan just before I do. What, what, what's, this, what's this code for? This, oh, sorry. So this is a code to unlock the the second Doctor Sonic screwdriver. And the tenth Doctor's kids costume. So both of those are from like the the sort of free teaser area, the levels, but they're they're rare drops. So we thought this would you know be a nice thing to do for people on Switch. Now, um, Nicholas, I hope you don't mind me cheekily just, asking. Um, last last time you were on, you you read out a code for us in the voice of a Jadoon. Um, would would you mind picking another of your favourite characters and reading out today's code? Well, it'll have to be the Jadoon again because I don't have a ring modulator here. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Jadoon? Also, really fast and. And John refused to do it because he said he could never live up to you. <laughs> well, he is, of course, correct. Is that the code there? Top right hand side. Can you see it? Or is, it is that big enough? Yeah. Or do you need it bigger? It's just about big enough for an old so and so like me. But I am going to do it in a Jadoon voice. Okay. So, awesome. Thank you. So here we go. Do you want it now? Yes, please. Five seven five nine four five four seven five five two six four seven seven two. Is it, does else get, when, it, when he does that, does anyone else feel the need to just put right put like a black X on their own hand just to prove that they're safe? Category human. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, very lucky I read out correctly. I don't know if I said this last time. I have a really strange habit of when I see numbers, I actually read out the wrong numbers. When I, you know, I just substitute other numbers. It's very strange. Quite difficult when you're doing the prisoner. <laughs> some of the i have done it in some of the scripts some of the actors say you know it says number two here isn't that number six's line nick I go, yes you're right sorry <laughs> <laughs> so um, i've just added in john davy to the call if you if you i don't know if he'll pick up at some point but susan, what, what else have you been involved with uh susan or what else or what uh, well well with? i should mention that our brewery our family's brewery you know tiny rebel um brewery in in wales um they've just um uh, their their beer, Kutch, is now the champion beer of Wales. So now we're associated no, with Britain. of Britain, of all of Britain, not Wales. Sorry, all of Britain. Oh, that's wow. amazing. Yeah. So I'm very, very proud of my my, my brothers-in-law um, for, for pulling that off, which is awesome. Um, Cause obviously, I know I came over to Cardiff the other day, but like, so how can yeah. I get hold of some of this beer if I'm not in Cardiff? Is there any way? Well, they're, they're, being, they're being inundated, as you can imagine. Like hundreds of bars are calling them wanting to carry Kutch. And, and um, so they're trying you know, desperately to, to meet demand. It's a very seasonal hop, so they're using it. So uh, they are... It's good, you know, good problem to have. Um, they're yeah. they're frantically busy. So so that's going on, and we're doing a racing game too. That was um, our involvement in Flat Out was announced yesterday. Flat Out Four. Yes, um, I'm going to be playing some Flat Out Two after this stream to show people a little bit what it's about. What it's about. Yeah, so we're busy working on that too. Can I just say, I I went to a brewery the other week. 
because where I, where I live in uh, Dorset, there is a microbrewery called Palmer's. Yeah. And we went to visit it. it my, my wife just said, we should visit the local brewery. <laughs> and uh, I discovered an alarming thing, that when the beer is fermenting, the, the top sort of um, about for a foot above it in the big vat, if you put your head in that, just in the air, or in the, you would die. Because there's because of the gas coming out during the fermentation process, is well, it's carbon? Is it carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide? I can't remember what it is. But you would if you stuck your head above, just above the fermenting beer at that stage of the fermentation process, you would suffocate. So it is deadly beer. It's all right once it's ready. Once it's in the bottle, I hasten to add. <laughs> you, you've got to get that like into a, into some sort of script at some point. You know, torture can. Yes. <laughs> Fermentation of the Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That Dalek is breathing alcohol. What? <laughs> Can I pull another pint? You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I uh, reverse the polarity on this fermentation process, we should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, I, well, I'm, I'm headed off to Chicago at Comic Con in Chicago uh, tomorrow. Which should be fun. Oh, awesome! Have you got a, a, is that a stall for Lexi? Uh, we do, and then uh, I am being interviewed on stage about uh, why in the world Lee and I made the jump from doing big console games like you know Grand Theft Auto and stuff to doing um, indie mobile games. I'm justifying myself on stage for an hour. Well, it, what is it, the it, answer? It's always a good question. It's always a good question. It's a lot more fun, you know. Um, you know, you work on these big console games and, you know, they can be hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands in the case of some games, people. And you see, you know, very small pieces of what you're doing. There's so many people involved and so many decisions that you just can't be very agile in the way you can be, you know, working on something, something more indie and manageable by a smaller team. So it's a lot more fun, you know, I mean, in, in some ways it's, it's not as, as, as sexy as, as a multi hundred million dollar console game, but uh, it's, it's more fun in terms of being able to actually change things and adapt and talk to the people who play it, you know, and be part of a community in a way we never were when we worked on console stuff. And that's that's, a, that's reason, I suppose, big... why you, you're now being asked by other companies to kind of help them with their community based. Um, yeah. I think we're kind of making a name for ourselves in really, heavily embracing our player community as opposed to treating them like customers and really trying to, um, to, um, to listen as much as we can. I mean, you, you can't listen to everybody because not everyone agrees, especially where it comes to Dr. Who, but, um, mm -hmm. you can, you know, they're, they're the people who've kept this game going for two, two, almost two years now. Um, so, um, we, you know, we, it's, it's, we're kind of the caretakers we like to think. Well, I, was, I was talking about you on, Tuesday, me and one of my, my best Oh, I hope decided. you're saying nice things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me, me and my best mate who've decided <laughs> to join the rest of humanity and having our own weekly podcast because we figured, you know, everyone else is, so why, why not? Mm. And uh, he are. Uh, you didn't tell me that. Awesome. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now. Um, it, it's, it's very, very small. But the, the basic format is we just talk about whatever, you know, we each come with things to talk about and then we, we randomly, you know, we each come with questions and it's kind of unprepared. But he, his, his question for me was what's the perfect model for a free to play game? <laughs> You know, because he was kind of moaning about another game he'd kind of played, and so of course I, I instantly kind of went, "Well, it's funny you should ask me that," and kind of, kind of went into the, the Doctor Who kind of legacy model because because it, it is it is a tricky pricing and things like that is very is a is a tricky thing to put together because you know people often are very reluctant to kind of put money into things they haven't played, but of course if you let them play, it, you're kind of giving them the you know, away. I mean, Nicholas, so how do you find it with the big finish stuff? Obviously, like pricing and things like that is a, is a money is always a kind of a difficult thing to kind of get into and things like that. I mean, as a, from a business perspective, how do you do it with the audio adventures? Well, it is difficult because um, things have got cheaper and cheaper in terms of what what people expect to get for their money. You know, uh, people expect to pay less and less for stuff. Yes, and of course, the problem with uh, for big finish is that. Uh, the means of making the productions has become more and more expensive. You know, costs, even in a time of low inflation, and for a while, no inflation, all standing costs go up for a business. You know, rent, uh, fees, um, materials you use, you know, and, and we're painfully aware that a lot of our contributors have been on the same level of, of payment for a lot, a lot longer than people normally are in jobs, you know. So there's that problem where the market expects you to be cheaper and the reality of making it me means you should be charging more. So, you know, our, so we've done various experiments with prices to see if we can 
increased demand by you know doing special deals where the price is lower. Yes. Um, but the trouble is with experimenting with price. In order to do it really effectively, and I'm not being facetious here, you really need to have a time machine. <laughs> because if you make a mistake, you can't undo it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you can't go back to where you were before, and you have to live with the mistake. Yeah. So, you know, um, there's an argument to say if we brought the price down, you know, like everything was a pound, maybe it would just sell so much that it would still generate the same amount of revenue we need to make the production. But how can we know that? Yeah. You know, so we, ha- so, you know, we do suffer from piracy quite a lot. And, um, you know, I just looked on a, a, a torrenting site the other day and I saw that the, the pirated amounts of just the latest things that had come out, and we do our best to get these things down as soon as possible from the pirate sites. Um, but, you know, the, the, the level at which it was being pirated uh, matched the, the number of legitimate sales. Wow. Now, of course, every pirated copy of something doesn't necessarily equal the potential for a legitimate sale. Some people take stuff just because it's free, not necessarily because they want it. But you can see, and the argument of a lot of people who pirate, pirate it just say, well, I, I can't afford it, so I'll take it for free. It's a strange attitude, and, you know, I'm sounding a bit old-fashioned now. It's a kind of attitude of entitlement. I, I was brought up to believe that if you couldn't afford something, then you couldn't have it. You don't have it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, saved to get it, but uh, that, that is not a prevalent attitude anymore. People think, well, it's your fault I can't afford it, you know, which to me I always use the perhaps, you know, old-fashioned analogy that you walk into a shop, see something's too expensive, and you just take it anyway, you know, and of course – you get arrested for that. Yeah. <laughs> and people say it's not the same. Part, it's not yeah. the same thing. But to me, I can't see that it isn't the same thing, taking something for free. And people do justify it with moral arguments that, that it is fine for them to steal the stuff we do. And of course, the fact that they steal it does make it more expensive for other people. Because if a large majority of the people who did steal our stuff bought it, then we would really be able to bring the price right down. Because I tell you something, none of us is making uh, uh, big bucks. We really are. We we do do, it for love and we do earn money, but, you know, there's... I'm too not, ashamed not as much, to tell you how little I'm paid. <laughs> I was going to say, not proportionate to the work, right? I mean, we, we've, we've dealt with it the same with this. You know, this is the first time we've had a couple of, of side packs that have a, a price associated with them. And we've gone out of our way to make them really good values. You know, the $10 Sonic Adventures has probably $100 worth of stuff if you look at how many time crystals each of those characters would cost. But we still have people who are, you know either annoyed that there are some things that they have to pay for in the game or, you know, sadly they, they thought because they unlocked the fan area, there'd never be anything else to pay for. And we would have loved to make that the case. But the fact is less than 10 percent, far less than 10 percent of people pay for anything, pay for the fan area. And so that makes it so that we have to charge everyone for additional things. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and if everybody unlocked the fan area or more than 10 percent, then maybe those areas would have been cheaper because, you know, there wouldn't be so much that we have to subsidize the cost of. So I, I totally, I know exactly where you're coming from. It's, uh, it's really, there will always be people that are unhappy. Like you can't please everyone, but, but obviously, no. this, as you said, this is the first premium pack you've done. And I, know, I know it was only released yesterday, but how, what's the general community reaction to it? Really good. I mean, I was excited last night. I mean, I, 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 I can't monitor immediately some of that stuff on every platform, but on Google I can, and I can I can say that there's a, there are a lot a lot of people who are unlocking both areas last night, which was really exciting to see. You know, we've been out for nearly two years, and we didn't know how it would go over, um, but it certainly seems like um, people are excited and unlocking the content. So, um, so we're excited about that. Thank you. I think this is an absolutely fascinating discussion, but let, let, let's let's go into something a bit more kind of more happy, if you, if if you like. I mean, are there any kind of more, what's, what's the next I would just say on a happy note that, you know, uh, that things are going well and we have found new people. So, you know, it's it's good. I'm not sitting and moaning that everyone's stealing everything and no one's buying it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, we have some Sorry, really... Don't talk to me about life. <laughs> we have really loyal supporters and we love them. We try to give them as much free stuff as possible, you know, and communicate with them directly, give them fun stuff like podcasts and, you know, 
you know, and it makes it more fun for us too. Anyway, go on. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no please do, please do. And, and by the way, a uh, cheap plug for my own podcast. It's on Tuesday nights, and you can find it on Audio Boom and uh, and um, and and iTunes. Um, you, you two guys, when's the next big finished Doctor Who Legacy collab- collaboration coming in? Because obviously, you know, you guys have worked together before. When 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 when's the next one? We were just talking about that before the phone call. Um, so we're we're going to try and figure that out. Now you're being so deliberately that, evasive and vague again. Oh, exactly. Yes. What can we say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there is there is one coming. Maybe. Uh, May, maybe, and it might involve Daleks, and it might be it might involve <laughs> Chicago. Okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, S- Susan, obviously, I can't buy the uh, the obviously to finish just on a technical thing. So we had a few questions here. So I can't get into the Apple stuff yet. Have you got any ideas when that will be fixed, or is it just at the moment you're still kind of trying uh, to diagnose? Apple it? Apple is trying to help us to figure it out. Uh, it's just very unusual. It's not everybody. Um, if some people are having the issue on one device, but not their other iOS device. We really don't know. No, none of the other platforms are having it. Which What's is that? What's the problem? Uh, you know, this is the first time we've had things that you can buy that are, are kind of entitlements. It's not like a consumable currency. And some people are having a hard time getting getting the transaction to actually happen. Like they're not getting a pop up from Apple, but it's not everybody. It's really weird. And we've been dealing with it all night and Apple's now on the case, too. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to find out it's Apple's fault and it's resolved. But, you know, we may also find that it's something we did. But um, we are we're kind of in a wait and see right now while Apple tries to figure it out for us. Right. I've got a, a thing here from one of our. Good, one the, of our... Good, the good thing I should say is that clearly everyone's excited and wants to access it. You know, it's, it's far better than the reverse, which is that no one really gave a crap and they couldn't get it. Um, and, you know, at least everyone can check out the free areas while they, while they wait. And I'm sure that we will imminently get it resolved. Uh, it's just, you know, obviously would have liked for that to not be a problem. Oh, absolutely. 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 And I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to playing it and, and playing it on, on the stream as well. Um, Nick, just just before we finish here, um, uh, one of our viewers here, Agrajag, who is basically the bible of all things Doctor Who, knows absolutely everything, has a has a, a comment slash question for you, which is, Nick, please, please, please be the next executive producer of the TV series. Big Finish's stories are so much superior to the BBC's. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that's just a matter of opinion. That's just a matter of opinion, but uh, <laughs> what was it? I think it was Phil Collinson who, on stage at uh, Chicago Tardis was uh, said to me, so go on. He said, if someone gave you the chance to be the executive, the showrunner of Doctor Who on TV, you'd do it, wouldn't you? You'd do it, Briggs. And I went, well, you know, the thing is that um, uh, someone at the BBC would have to go completely mad in order to offer me the job. I haven't got the CV for it. I absolutely (laughs) think I could do it, obviously. But I don't know, you know. It's just a mad proposition. It's just like asking me if, um, you know, if I want to be king of the world or something like that, you know, it's just, it's just so beyond possibility that it's not really worth talking about. But, you know, I could say that, you know, were, were we to be living in a strange alternative universe and I were, was, was to be offered the job, I would certainly give it some serious consideration. Oh, I think, I think <laughs> just take it as the, in, as in a complimentary form which it was offered. Um, compl- yes, compliments on yes the, I'm deeply complimented by compliments it. Compliments on the positioning of your light as well. You've got a truly lovely radiant glow going. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and that brings us to the end of Doctor Who Legacy for this week. Nicholas, thank you so much for coming on again. And, and, and Susan, of course, thank you for, for being here at present as always. Um, any thank last you. minute plugs you guys want to do? Any websites you'd like people to check out? Well, bigfinish.com, obviously. <laughs> bigfinish.com for your, all your audio adventure needs. Susan? Uh, game.com We'll get you to everywhere else. Absolutely. And of course, the, if, in a, if you haven't got the new update yet, you probably will need to do a, new, a manual upgrade update from the store. So if you can't see any of it, go and um, grab it. I'll be back in about 15 minutes with some flat out. Susan, just, can you just tell us this little, I know this is Doctor Legacy stream, but what, what are you guys doing with flat out? Uh, well, we are, we're essentially the like, production company and designing it is a you know, sort of creative direction as well. We're making sure the game can be as high quality as it can possibly be. And we're also helping them to get involved with the community to get, you know, to sort of get the community involved in what the game should, should be. Awesome. So if you'd like to see a little bit about what Susan and Lee will be or are being involved with, I'll be playing the older flat out in about 15 minutes. So don't come in, don't go anywhere, go grab a drink and I will be back with some racing action. And that's it. That's our stream for today. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Make sure you get that code uh, before we go, because that code will not be working, I assume, in about an hour or so. Please don't share it on social media. It's just for you for being special and coming to join us here today. And don't forget the Doctor Who Legacy 
drawing competition, which has words that I've never used before, closes on Sunday. So get us your jadoon. Of course, you can Photoshop Nicholas's face on there if you wish. <laughs> oh, and I'm getting a, some hazards from the chat as well, which is fantastic. <laughs> Nicholas, again, thank you so much for joining us again. Today. Pleasure, pleasure. And Susan, I will see thank you, you again, week. Nicholas. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. You have been fantastic. And you know what? So was I. Goodbye. Um, he says very badly. <laughs>